This is problem 8-1 on page 314. A gear has 44 teeth of the 20 degree full depth involute form and a diametral pitch of 12. Compute the following and there's A through K. I'm not going to read them. You can read them. There's a bunch of stuff. It's all just gear geometry stuff. It's just size stuff. So let's write down what's been given first of all. And one of the hardest parts about gearing at, at the beginning uh, is the geometry itself because there's so many different particular symbols that are used for all the different dimensions. So we'll try to, uh, to uh, identify each of them as we go. The, the tooth, the uh, gear, has 44 teeth. We will always use a capital N for the number of teeth. Now a lot of times we use a subscript P or G for pinion or gear, but since we're only talking about one gear, I don't know if it's the pinion or the gear, so I'm just going to leave it as a capital M or N. Uh, the 20 degree pressure angle, we always use the symbol phi for that. So you need to get used to seeing phi as the pressure angle. Okay, uh, diametral pitch of 12. Do you guys know what symbol we use for diametral pitch? It's P sub D. Now, what's, uh, what confuses students uh, about the diametral pitch is that it actually has to have units. And students don't understand this. Remember that diametral pitch is basically the um, number of gear teeth per inch of diameter. Okay, so, uh, and I always have to think if I get that right or not. Uh, let me make sure that's right. Uh, no, it's number, of, yeah, number of teeth per inch of diameter. Okay, so basically diametral pitch has units of inverse inches, or one over inches. Okay. Now, if we're talking about, um, and you may say, well, what about metric? I mean, uh, isn't there a diametral pitch in metric? Actually, there's not. There's a metric module. And so uh, uh, the metric module is different than diametral pitch, but you'll see that as well a little bit later. Okay, so there's the three things that we're given. We're supposed to compute the pitch diameter of the gear. Now, what is the pitch diameter of the gear? Well, that's the effective diameter. That's the diameter that you would use in a, a gear ratio calculation. And so how do, you, how do you do that? Well, it's pretty easy. Um, I don't know if there's an equation. There must be an equation somewhere in the book. I don't know where it's at. I just understand what diametral pitch is. I know that it is number of teeth per diameter of gear, per inch of diameter of the gear. And so all I do is just rearrange this equation and say, well, the diameter of the gear is, let's see, the number of gear teeth divided by the diametral pitch. Number of gear teeth we know is 44. Uh, diametral pitch is 12 inverse inches. And so take your, I forgot to bring my calculator, but take your calculator out and uh, take 44 over 12. What do you get? 3.67. 3.67. So it's uh, 3.6 repeated for a number right. Yeah. And that would be inches. So there's the diameter of the gear. Now that's not the, the outside diameter, that's the pitch diameter. So to get the outside diameter, you'd have to add twice the addendum to that, but we'll get to that. Uh, next thing they want us to calculate is the circular pitch. Do you guys remember what the circular pitch really is? It's the discipline in the bottom of the tooth. That's, uh, that's not quite it. That's uh, the addendum plus the dedendum, which has another name, which is too tight, I think. I don't know. We'll get to it. Uh, circular pitch is if you were to take one point on a tooth, this, a similar point on the next tooth, and then measure the length on the arc between the two. That is, is the uh, uh, circular pitch. Now the circular pitch is related to the di diametral pitch by pi. And so basically if you take the circular pitch and multiply it by the diametral pitch, you will always get pi. Now that's an equation in your book as well. Uh, or is it? I don't see it right off. You can see it from just the definition of circular pitch. Uh, equation 8-2 is like this. It says that circular pitch uh, P is pi D over N. If you recognize uh, N over D as the diametral pitch, then this is just pi over the diametral pitch, and you can see how we can get there. I mean, so these are simple things. 
It's just a matter of knowing what's what, what it's called, and what it means. Okay. So if we want the circular pitch, we could either go through the equation I just showed you, or equivalently, calculate the circular pitch from the diametral pitch. I'm going to calculate it from the diametral pitch because that's what was given. So this will be pi divided by uh, 12 uh, inverse inches. And when you take that ratio, you should get 0.2618 or so. Yep, makes sense. Okay, now most of this is pretty easy stuff. It's not difficult. This is just a matter of knowing what it is you're given and where is the equation to plug it into and get what you need. Uh, the equivalent module. Now, this is something that is important. This is one of those pages or, or tables or whatever that you want to mark. Uh, go to page 282 and look at table 8-4. Uh, this table has a conversion from metric to English gears. Um, the equivalent diametral pitch is where the, the, it's the diametral pitch you'd have to have to have the exact same gear tooth size as the metric gear tooth. But the closest one is listed as the third column. Now what they asked us to find was the equivalent module. Now, um, you could look at this table and uh, try to use it, but they don't really have an equivalent module. They have an equivalent diametral pitch. They're asking us to go the other way. So how would we do that? Well, uh, basically, it's just a conversion. Look over at uh, page 281, equation 8-4. And you'll see that the metric module is sort of like the inverse of diametral pitch. It's the diameter divided by the number of teeth rather than the number of teeth divided by diameter. So it's, it's kind of like the inverse. So really all we need to do is use a conversion factor. Now, go over again to page 282 and look down uh, below that, that table, that conversion table, and you'll notice there's a heading that says relation between P sub D, the diametral pitch, and M, the metric module. It's a very straightforward relationship. It says a metric module is one over the diametral pitch. Now, that's not really a surprise, given that the metric module is defined in terms of diameter of gear over number of teeth. But you have to use a conversion factor, since really the units here of the diametral pitch is 12 inverse inches. I should have written down one there here. One over diametral pitch. So this is one over 12 inverse inches. Now what we have to do to actually get it in metric units, which is of course what we would want, is to convert the inches. So the units of this term are inches, so there's 25.4 millimeters per inch and that takes care of the inch units. So basically you take 25.4 divide it by 12 and that will give you the equivalent metric module. Now when you do that, uh, or when I did it, I came up with 2.117 millimeters. So there's the equivalent metric module. Okay, uh, nearest standard module. Well, all we have to do here is round this off. So go back to page 282. You'll notice 2.117 is closest to 2. So the closest metric module is 2 millimeter. What page is that on you? That is on page 282. Question so far? This is the part that will lull you to sleep because it seems easy and then when you try to go and use it you're wondering where all the equations are that you need. Notice we're spending all of our time on page uh, uh, 281 and 282 so far. I thought that uh, you're going from Because of the closest standard module. Correct. Yeah, two millimeters is the closest. Notice that something like 2.5 or 2.4 is not a standard metric module. Maybe there's 2.2. Didn't see the two or 2.5, and that's the range between. This was closest to two. Okay. I thought that 
You got the two from the very right? No, from the very left column. Because the very left column is the metric module. Okay. Good question. Anything else? Okay. Um, the nearest standard module, we just did that. The addendum. Okay, so now we get into some equations that are pretty straightforward. Go back to page 280 and uh, see the uh, heading in the, the table that says gear tooth features. Page 280. Okay, gear tooth features. It's about halfway down in the chart. Notice the first item beneath gear tooth features is the addendum A. Uh, and there's an equation here to help us out. Um, uh, over on the formulas it says U.S. full depth involute system coarse pitch diametral pitch less than 20 or fine pitch diametral pitch greater than or equal to 20. Well, it doesn't matter which one we have. The equation is still the same. A is just 1 over the diametral pitch. Now, what is the addendum physically? Well, if you look at the tooth form of an involute tooth, there's a pitch line that we've already discovered from the, the pitch diameter, but the addendum is the distance between the top land of the teeth, of the tooth, and the, uh, the pitch circle. That's what the addendum is physically. Okay, so if you calculate the addendum, it's pretty straightforward. The addendum A is 1 over the diametral pitch, so that's 1 12th. And so that comes out to 0 0.0833 inches. Notice I'm beginning to drop the inverse inches. It's just understood. Everyone just knows the diametral pitch is measured in inverse inches. Now, me being rusty, I have to go back and think about it every now and then. But I knew it was either inches or inverse inches, and it's, it's inverse inches. Okay, so there's the distance. It's 83 thousandths or so from the pitch uh, circle to the top of that tooth. The dedendum. Well, not surprisingly, the next item in that chart is the dedendum. And the dedendum, that one does depend on whether you've got a coarse pitch tooth or a fine pitch tooth. In our case, the diametral pitch is 12. And since that is less than 20, that means we have coarse pitch. And so the proper D denim for this, B, is 1.25 over the diametral pitch. So B is 1.25 over diametral pitch. So that's 1.25 over 12. And the result, uh, let's see, is 0 0.1042 inches. Okay. Now physically, what is the dedendum? Well, the dedendum is the distance from that pitch uh, circle, basically, down to the root of the tooth. And I have trouble remembering this. I, I have trouble because I know there's some clearance at the bottom, so I never remember if the dedendum is from the pitch circle down to the root or if it's down to that, that uh, clearance, the top of the clearance. And that's why it's handy to get, be able to go back and look at the figure like the one on page 278. Figure 8-8 shows you what all this stuff is, so you don't have to memorize it as well. But anyway, so there's our dedendum. The dedendum is, in fact, all the way down to the bottom of the root of the tooth. So there's, there it is. The clearance, G. What's your clearance, Clarence? One person has seen the movie. Clearance, uh, page 280, that's the next item. The clearance is given the symbol C. And once again, it depends on whether we have coarse or fine gear teeth. We have coarse gear teeth, so C is a quarter over PD. Now, you might look at all these equations and wonder where did they come from? Is there some reason for this? Well, these are all just standard. That's all. They're just standard gear teeth. And that's why these equations are true. So 0 0.25 over 12 in inverse inches, uh, let's see, comes out to a little over 20 thousandths. 
And you might be tempted to round off that fourth decimal place and say, well, what gear tooth is going to be made more accurate than one thousandth of an inch? Actually, most of them. Uh, gear teeth are actually very precise things. Um, and so you can't just round off. In fact, one of the things we do in gear geometry is try to avoid using secondary calculations in another result. So if I've, if I've been given this information here, I want to calculate as much about the gear as I can from that information directly, not use a result. So for example, I wouldn't take, even though you might notice that uh, the clearance, uh, let's see, we'll get to that in a minute. But there's various ways you could combine A, B, and C to get other dimensions. For example, the distance from the top of the clearance up to the, the top land of the tooth is an important dimension as well. You might be tempted to add A and B, but you don't. You avoid that. Okay, so if you added A and B and then subtracted C, where C is that clearance, you wouldn't want to do that. You want to calculate this overall height based on this directly. You okay. 1 over BDE plus 1 over 1.25 over BDE monitor plus... Yeah, you'd want to avoid that. You'd want to use, you'd want to calculate that distance there directly from BD. And the reason for that is because you're trying to preserve precision. Okay. You don't want to end up with round off error in your calculations. Now one of the projects I usually have the students do, it's a small project, uh, but I actually have them draw the gear teeth in SOLIDWORKS, draw a standard envelope profile in SOLIDWORKS. And it's not easy. It's not easy, but it can be done. And I've had students thank me before and say, you know what, when you made us do that, I didn't like it, but I actually have used that in my job. And they liked it. Um, so I'm, I'm debating whether or not I'm going to give that to you guys. It depends on how long it takes you to finish off the drift tracks, I guess. But Anyway, uh, there's the clearance. The whole depth, H. Okay, the whole depth. Uh, go back in the chapter and look to see what the whole depth is. I uh, thought they had a figure that showed it to you. Basically, the whole depth is just the sum of A and B. It's just this overall height of the tooth from the very top land to the very bottom land. And I have trouble remembering whether it's HT or HK. So fortunately, I wrote it here in my notes. It's HT. It's the height of the tooth. Now, you can look at that and say, well, it's A plus B. That's true. And I know that you're not going to get anything way off or different even by simply adding A and B, but we don't do that. Even though the whole depth is A plus B, in the spirit of keeping things precise, what we do instead is take 2.25 over the diametral pitch. See? So we add these numbers since these are exact and then divide by the diametral pitch. Basically, we just added two fractions. Okay? I know it looks like we're splitting hairs and it's not terribly important, but in a gear you are splitting hairs. It is precise. So anyway, so 2.25 over 12 inverse, and there's, there's other places where this will be important. Uh, here, of course, it doesn't matter, but I'm trying to get you used to the principle of the thing. So this is 0 0.16 repeating uh, inches. I'm sorry. Let's try that again. How about 0 0.1875 inches? There we go. Okay, the working depth is HK. Now the working depth, see the idea of this clearance in here is that the mating tooth will never get down into that area or at least it will never engage down in that area. And so the working depth of the tooth is really from here up to here. And so that is given another symbol that I, I've already drawn the dimension, but that's given the symbol HK. And HK is different than HT. HK uh, is really the dimension I mentioned a second ago, A plus B less C. Okay, so once again, we're not going to take A plus B less C. If you notice, C, I've erased it, but C was 0.25 on the diametral pitch. If we were to take A plus B, we'd get 2.25 less C, it would be just 2. In other words, saying this is that this is simply 2A, but again, we will not just take A and multiply it by 2. Instead, what we'll do is take 2 over the diametral pitch, which is the same thing, but 
one step. So 2 over 12 inverse inches. And you come out with a working depth of, that's the next line, one point, or 0.16 repeating inches. Okay. Questions so far? Okay, the tooth thickness, item J. The tooth thickness, let's find the equation for it, because that'll be, uh, oh good, they've got it in the table as well. Uh, go to page 280 again. Obviously, table 8-1 is one that you'll want to mark. Uh, tooth thickness. There's a general formula here that says the tooth thickness is the circular pitch over 2. Okay, do you see that? Now, if you use the circular pitch over 2, I would probably dock you a couple of points on an exam. That's not fair. It's right there in the book. The reason is because, once again, we try to do things more precisely. So if you go over one column, you'll notice this can be computed based on pi over 2 times the diametral pitch in the denominator. Since diametral pitch is what was given, I would expect you to use this one. If I gave you circular pitch, if I didn't give you this, if I gave you the circular pitch, I would expect you to use this one. Okay? It goes back to trying to use the, the most precise, you know, least round off equation that you can. So in our case, since we have diametral pitch, that's what we'll use. Okay, so when you plug all that in, you find that the uh, tooth thickness is 0 0.131 inches. Now let me critique even this equation just a little bit at this point. If you actually made a gear with that tooth thickness, you would have zero clearance. And so actually some backlash is recommended. And there is a, um, there is a recommendation for backlash on page 283 in table 8-5. In fact, maybe the next thing they're going to ask us to find, I don't remember, let me look and see. Uh, no, they want the outside diameter. But we're going to go and find the backlash as, as well while we're right here. Um, Okay, diametral pitch system backlash in inches, recommended minimum backlash for coarse pitch gears. Good, that's what we have. And you'll notice that the upper part of this table, uh, A is for the diametral pitch, B is for metric module. Now, we can't really do it here because we don't have a center distance, but I'm going to assume a, a center distance. And the center distance is just the distance between the center of this gear and the center of its mating gear. That's all it really is. Uh, we don't have that. Tell you what, let's go ahead and finish off the problem because the next thing they ask us to find is the outside diameter. And I think uh, we found, didn't we find the uh, diameter? Yeah, we did. It was 3.667. Let's go find the outside diameter first, then let's come back and consider the outside diameter, assume a reasonable center distance, and then look up the, the backlash. Okay, so the outside diameter, how do we do that? Well, that's... Uh, What is it? It's in the table. It is in the table? I'm missing it. Try to do a pitch table. Ah, thank you. So I had to go up above your tooth features. Okay, so diameter is pitch diameter, outside diameter, root diameter. Uh, diameter of the outside is uh, number of teeth plus two divided by the diametral pitch. So the outside diameter, uh, let's take care of that quickly. This stuff. I want to keep these for just a minute. So the outside diameter is the number of teeth plus two divided by the diametral pitch. So number of teeth is 44 plus two is 46 divided by 12 inverse inches. And we'll get uh, 3.8 three three inches for the outside diameter. Okay, now notice that the outside diameter, I could have computed it by taking that diameter that I computed originally, which was 3.667 inches. And adding two times the addendum, because really this diameter is the diameter to the, the pitch circle. And if I had added the addendum on one side and the addendum on the other side, I should have the same thing. But once again, we want everything to be as precise as possible. 
That's why I use this equation instead. But grab your calculators just for fun. And let's see if, if you get the same thing. So 2 times 0 0.0833 plus 3.667. What do you get? 3.8. But I used 3.67. I got 3.8836. Yeah. Okay. So see how using this one I get a slightly more precise result. Just take the 6 off the end of your right. <laughs> Actually, I should have one more. Uh, uh, no. So the units of different figures is very crucial. Yes. And you want at least 4 with you. Okay, now let's go back and consider backlash. The center distance will depend on the number of teeth in both gears or the diameters of both gears. But let's just choose something reasonable. A gear about the same size, bigger, smaller, you know, at least in the same order of magnitude would be reasonable. So let's just make our lives easy and say the center distance is eight inches. Okay. All right, so if the center distance were eight inches, then what kind of clearance would be recommended? Uh, and I made our lives really easy, actually, because I happened to pick uh, a center distance that is one of the columns. <laughs> I got lucky. I really didn't intend to do that. So for a diametral pitch of 12 and a center distance of 8 inches, then the recommended backlash in inches is 9 thousandths of an inch. So that's... Uh, it's on page 283. It's in the, the table. Uh, center distance, 8 inches, diametral pitch 12, just okay. intersect. Yeah, it's a little different. Yeah. So you're probably going to have 7 on the test. Probably wouldn't, yes. <laughs> yeah, most likely. So, center distance at 8, diametral pitch 12, backlash, there. I was looking the other way. So. Okay. Now, one note, let me just read what your author has to say here um, on backlash. To provide backlash, the cutter generating the gear teeth can be fed more deeply into the gear blank than the theoretical value on either or both of the mating gears. Alternatively, backlash can be created by adjusting the center distance to a larger value than the theoretical value. The maximum or the magnitude of backlash depends on the desired precision of the gear pair and on the size and pitch of the gears. It is actually a design decision balancing cost of production with desired performance. Uh, the AGMA provides recommendations for backlash in their standards, and this is that's where this table comes from. Now, one thing we haven't, well, I'll go ahead and quit the video.